Do you realize the NFL has NFL Today on CBS has been on for ten years? It's hard to believe. Phyllis George, and you've been in and out of it for ten years. That's right. Mary. Campaign, two babies, a husband, all kinds of things. My goodness, but Phyllis was just in Nebraska not too long ago campaigning for our Governor Bob Carey. What a handsome one he is, oh. and a very likable one, I might add. How has it been being the first lady of the locker room and the first lady of <laughs> Kentucky? I'm, I'm thinking in terms of your behavior as the first lady, the first lady of Kentucky. Well, I certainly didn't have a role model to pattern my life after. You know, young, young women now are always looking to role models and picking this or that quality out of people they admire and kind of pattern, patterning their life after them. Well, I didn't have that person. When uh, John became governor and I became first lady, there were certain ways that they had done that in the past, and I had to make the differentiation right then that I was not just a tea and coffee person, that I wanted to be outspoken and have view views on different social issues or political issues, and that I was going to continue a career even if I did get pregnant. And I think at first it kind of shook everybody up a little bit because it, it was a break from the change. It was a change. It wasn't what everybody else had done. And um, uh, so far, so good. I survived it all. John's no longer governor. He, we have, he's one term there, and then you have to sit out a term. Will he do it again? Is he going to run again? He's keeping his options open. Uh, everybody wants him to. He, he was an outstanding governor and, and ran it like a business, and, and a lot of people, including Bob, uh, your governor, understood what he did and not copied it, but took some good ideas from John on how to run it like a business. Well, I was really curious because we are our, our governor's wife prior to Carrie, Ruthie Thorne. I know, I've you know interviewed Ruthie? her before. Mm -hmm. Well, she slid down the, the staircase in the governor's I mansion. I heard about that. And I mean, she was roundly and soundly criticized for just a kind of a fun little act. And people thought, you know, the governor's, the first lady, the governor's wife should not be behaving in such a way. They should behave the way they feel comfortable behaving. I don't think anymore that we have this, we have to do the way it was done in the past. I really don't. I'm a firm believer. Just because this dress may be in fashion doesn't mean you have to wear it. Or because blue eyeshadow may be in fashion and brown isn't anymore. You do what makes you happy, and if Ruthie enjoyed doing that, more power to her. That's what makes the world go round. Mm -hmm. Are you still annoyed with the press for casting little barbs at you because of your weight? They, they don't, haven't done that lately since I lost, uh, I lost it. Uh, when, when you say your weight, you mean prior to right now, I'm sure. Prior to when the time when you were pregnant yes, and putting yes, on weight. Yes, I want to make sure that everybody out there knows that I've lost the weight. Um, yeah, I had two babies in, in the public eye. Actresses have a baby and they stay out of the limelight for a year and go off to a health spa and lose it and come back in and start a movie. Uh, Phyllis George was married to a governor and had to go play first lady roles in the meantime, as well as coming back on the air because of a contract. And I, and I guess, again, I was a pioneer. Nobody had ever done that before. And um, just like everything else, they'll forget about that. I, I'm convinced as soon as they see me back on in the fall and say, oh, she looks great again. Um, I think it was an unfair thing in that other women do gain weight and do have to lose weight and have to work hard at it. And usually those criticizing were men. Mm. And um, I had a few choice words for a couple of them here and there. And some of the women, some of the, of course, the women that made comments looked anorexic to me. So, mm -hmm. well, so we, we survived it all. We but they, have, they were worth it. They we have to show everybody in Nebraska why she got fat. You see, uh, your, your boy is named what? Lincoln Tyler George Brown. Named after Lincoln, Nebraska, of course. No, well, <laughs> or the fact that Abraham Lincoln was born in Kentucky. And the little one? Pamela Ashley is nine months old. And um, this Lincoln is the one I gained the weight with, and I didn't gain as much with her. But I think when you have been Miss America and they have this glamorous image of you that they expect you to look like Twiggy before and after, a birth. And um, with him, I loved every minute of the weight I put on. It was once in my life when I could enjoy it and eat chocolate cake and do things that I was never, had never done. With her, I learned my lesson from him. Ah. And, uh, and this is Lady. She, they've added another baby. <laughs> uh -huh. Our King Charles uh, Cavalier Spaniel. And that is, th this is Lincoln's dog. So oh. we have a nice family. And John has three children from a former marriage, and so he's now got five children. And he said, that's yeah, it, he can't well, afford the trust funds anymore. Well, yeah, I can understand. <laughs> okay, that's it. Well, two, yes. zero population, you're okay. Zero All population. Right. All right, now we're going to look ahead to the football season on the Cornhuskers for 1984. 
What do you think of our Cornhusker team? Have you had a chance to really do any research yet, Phyllis? Just uh, in my lunch break today, they were doing a whole survey of the college teams, and Nebraska's always good. I mean, Nebraska is a football state, just like Texas is, where I'm from. And uh, I think they're going to do very well. Uh, God forbid I wouldn't say anything <laughs> other than that, would I, if, I, if I'm smart? No, you, you're going to have a good team. I think you always will. They're tough in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. They're that's that what that corn-fed meals and, and uh, the good meat and everything they get. Uh, the athletes all get it, boy. They do. Yes, yes. Um, it's been said that with all the gang on NFL today, that there are four and a half egos. Who's the half? Brent Musburger, one. Mm -hmm. You, the other one. John Madden, the other one. John, he's Jimmy the Greek, the other one. And Irv Cross only has, has half, half an one. ego. <laughs> and that it's really a battle of the no, egos. No, I think it, you have an ego or you wouldn't be sitting here with your hair fluffed and your makeup on. I think anybody on television has somewhat of an ego. And uh, the ego problem was nothing more. It wasn't even an ego problem. It was a problem of five people trying to do a show in 24 minutes and trying to feel like that you had done something that was pertinent to what was going on that Sunday. And um, we don't have a two-hour show like they do on Good Morning America, uh, you know, where you have six minutes to do an interview. I mean, our interviews are like 30 seconds live, and that's it. We're going on. Uh, you have to have an ego in this business, and, and, and God help you if you do, because if you don't, you're not going to make it. Yeah. We get along famously now. We're a family. We've had our ups and downs, our highs and lows. We have survived, and we will survive. John Madden is not on our show. He's on with Pat Summerall, and I think he's marvelous. And I think Jimmy the Greek adds a certain splendor to the show that uh, no other show offers. But for 10 years, we have been number one, and we have beaten NBC every Sunday. And I think if you look at that, and you look at the show, and you look at the people on it, you have to pat them on the back, and the producers and the directors who often don't get mentioned. Uh, and the guy who thought of it, who thought of the NFL Today show years ago. And who thought of including a woman. Well, yeah. I mean, now I'm there because I should be. Before I was there because everybody said, well, maybe we ought to try that. So again, I think Barbara Walters was the pioneer in news broadcasting, and I became the pioneer in sports. And um, now, you know, after winning two Emmys, and um, uh, in, a, in a nice contract and, and a good ratings and uh, a lot of nice people there. I think I'm going to be there for at least oh another well, year. Oh well, well. <laughs> at least one more year. Well, good luck to you, Phyllis George. Thank you. Thank you for opening the door and kicking it wide open for women covering sports. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. it. Come see us in New York sometime and sit in the studio with us. It's okay. an interesting day. Ten years coming up. NFL Today Sundays right here on 1011. Our guest has been Phyllis George. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting Thank you. you. Stay tuned. 1011 Morning continues.